I'm Vinny Politan. Thank you so much for joining us here on Closing Arguments. A lot to get to this hour. We're going to begin, though, by opening up our unsolved case file. This is the part of the program where each night we take a look at a story from around the country uh, that needs some help, a case that has not been solved, um, justice that has not been served, questions that have not been answered. Tonight's story comes to us from Tulsa, Oklahoma. It goes back to 2008, involves the murder of a man named Frederick Wilson. Our affiliate, KJRH, has the story. Oh, he was a good kid, active, liked to play basketball, go swimming, go to the park. Sandra Wilson went to all of her son Frederick Wilson's basketball games, but they disagreed about football. Uh, this one here, he's a big OU fan, and we would always go rivalry, OU, OSU. Frederick's cousin even played for OU and wore number 82, honoring the year Frederick was born. As a child, Sandra gave Frederick a unique nickname. I'm Petey Wheatstraw. Petey Wheatstraw, a character from a 1970s comedy horror movie that was killed and came back to life. After high school, Petey had a child of his own, a daughter named Kennedy. They were very close. But the father and daughter time was cut short when Kennedy was just five years old. Me and my friends was playing dominoes. And I might have went in another room. He said, your house phone rung. Somebody called me and told me that he had got shot. But they didn't ever tell me he was already dead. Unlike the character from the movie, I never gonna see him no more. She took everything away from me. Sandra's Petey was not coming back. Petey and his girlfriend were watching TV just before he was killed. Minimum of at least two men came into the house. Rick Lawrence with the Tulsa County Cold Case Unit says that's when the real terror began. The people came in, they uh, zip-tied both of the occupants of the home. They uh, then covered them up with uh, sheets and blankets, things like that, to where they couldn't see what was going on. The motive, they suspect, they were there to rob him of his uh, uh, drug money proceeds, and uh, he was rumored to have had several thousand dollars there in the apartment with him. After the robbery, Petey was shot once in the back of the head. After the robbers left, the girlfriend was able to get her zip tie off of her feet, and then she went to the front door, was able to manipulate the door open, and went to the neighbors and called the police. How the robbers got in the home has always troubled detectives. It's uh, believed that they were let in the house or they crawled in through the window in the bathroom. But there's a problem with that. The height of the window was pretty yep. significant. And it only opened about six inches. There's another nagging piece of this puzzle for these investigators. Why leave a witness? That's a very good question. That's an excellent question. Typically, you wouldn't find a witness in a situation like this. Investigators say the only witness has been less than cooperative. And she did have enough time to actually see them when they came yes. into the house. Yes. So it wasn't that she was immediately covered. That said, investigators are on the trail of Petey's killers. The suspects I have are very well known to law enforcement. In the meantime, missed opportunities for the mother and daughter Petey leaves behind. And I wish she was here, you know where he can see her grow up, graduate. She get married, he ain't gonna be, he's not here for nothing. She, uh, whoever killed him took all that away. All right, folks, if you have any information, you can call the Tulsa County Cold Case Unit, 918-596-5612, 918-596-5612. We have a special guest joining us now. Tulsa, Oklahoma, from our great affiliate KJRH, anchor and host of Oklahoma's Cold Case Files, which airs Friday nights at 10 and streams on Roku TV on the 2 News Oklahoma channel. Vincent Hill, back with us. Great to see you, Vincent. Vinny, always a pleasure, sir. How are you? Good. Um, first question, and, and I think a lot of people have this question, how did they get in? How, how did they get inside this house? That seems to be the, the first thing that might lead to um, what really is going on here. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's the biggest clue to this case, right? So there's speculation that maybe they were let in through the sliding glass door in the back or they climbed in through a bathroom window. But the problem with the window, Vinny, is the window was quite high and it was only open about six inches or so. 
uh, when uh, investigators took crime scene photos. So the question is, were they let into that house, and was this more than a robbery? That's the big question investigators are faced with. Now, when you spoke with the cold case unit, they were, they were talking about potential that there were thousands of dollars in the, in the apartment. Now, how, do you, how does some stranger get that information? How is someone going to get that information? Um, you're a former officer as well, an, an investigator. So uh, looking at that question, who is going to know about that money? Well, obviously, someone that runs in the same circle, okay? So the, the drug world, it's a small circle. So anytime you're dealing with drug dealers, they usually know what you have, when you have it. They know when you, what's called re-up. They know when your cash is in there. And you also had someone else in the home that survived this. So the question is, was she part of this robbery slash murder as well? That's a, that's a big part of it, right? So the... The way the story goes is that somehow they get into the, the house or apartment and then they tie up the victim, uh, Frederick, and his girlfriend, but he's the only one who's killed. That is correct, Vinny. He was shot once in the head. She somehow managed to uh, escape. Uh, you can hear the question I posed to the cold case detectives, why leave a witness? Because... You know, she had opportunity to see who came into that home. She had opportunity to identify them. But here we are 13 years later, and she has yet to cooperate with investigators. So you have to question what was her motive in this. Absolutely. You know, on the other hand, I could see someone saying, well, I am not cooperating because I don't want to get killed myself. If I give any information about who these killers are, they're going to come after me. But, you know, you go back one step, if they're committing... One murder, what would stop them from committing two murders at the same time? Absolutely, Vinny. And listen, I worked narcotics in the streets of Nashville. Usually, you don't leave witnesses when you're coming in and you're killing someone because that witness can go to detectives and say, this person did it. They can go to court and say, that person on the st over there to my left did this crime. But why would you leave a witness if you weren't involved in it, in some aspect. Some aspect. And, and she's been non-cooperative. So we, we go, we're going all yeah. back to 2008, not helping investigators, somehow survives this horrific home invasion slash murder, uh, but has no interest in helping police in, in figuring out and determining who killed her boyfriend and tied her up with zip ties. Yeah, not only that, Vinny, she's moved out of the state. She now lives in the Dallas, Texas area. You know, I spoke to Sandra Wilson, Petey's mom, earlier today. Uh, and when I spoke with her, when I uh, interviewed her for this case, she said that the girlfriend has never once reached out to say, I'm sorry for your loss or anything like that. It's like she no longer exists to the family. Just disappeared. Were, 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 how close were they? You know, as boyfriend and girlfriend, you know, there's all different levels of, of relationship. Do we have any idea how close they were at the time all this happened? Well, from what I understand from Sandra, they, they did date for several years. They were pretty close. Uh, but she also shared that they argued a lot, mostly about money. Uh, so, you know, again, as a former law enforcement, as a former uh, investigator that investigated narcotics and just simple 101 Law enforcement, the person you want to look at the most that survives is the spouse or the significant other. So it, it seems that they have some people on the radar here, right? I mean, obviously they want to speak with her, but it sounded like they may have some other guys on the radar in this case and need to put a few pieces together here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the two men that... Uh, the detective was discussing, as he said, they're known to law enforcement, right? Uh, so they have a history with law enforcement here in Tulsa. But the problem is until that witness comes forward and says, yes, these are the two men that did this, they really don't have a case. Right. And she would have known if there were thousands of dollars there. She would have been able to open the door. And if, in fact, that's, that's what happened, we don't know. 
We don't know if she was threatened to do something. Right. We don't know if she had anything to do with this. But th these are all the issues that, if you're cooperating, can be cleared up, right? I mean, that's another part of cooperating is, is, is figuring out what happened, but also figuring out what didn't happen. Yeah, absolutely. And keep in mind, too, Vinny, there was no forced entry into the home. And, you know, when you're in the drug game, you keep your stuff under lock and key. If you have several thousands of dollars in your home, I was told it was upwards of 10,000 plus dollars. You keep your stuff under lock and key. It's 1.30 in the morning. Usually, even if you're not in the drug game, you're going to have your house locked up. So the, the huge question to solve this case is how did those individuals get into the home and why was only one person targeted? So taking a look at this case and, and seeing that it's all the way 2008, the one witness who perhaps could shed light on everything has left uh, town. What are your thoughts and, and prospects of perhaps someone else coming forward? Uh, perhaps one of the two killers coming forward at this point to, to help investigators put those pieces together and solve it? Well, I definitely don't think the two killers will come forward, right? Because they would be looking at possibly life in prison with the, the robbery and the murder. Uh, but the, at the same time, it's a small world. Again, in the drug world, those two men have told someone who's told someone who's told someone. So it just takes that one person to come forward and say, yes, this is what I know that happened on April 22nd, 2008 to Frederick Wilson. And how about the way the, the crime scene was, was, was processed? You know, if you have known individuals who maybe are in the system, um, did, was, was, and I'm wondering, is it possible that there could be some DNA that was left somewhere in that house that was collected, or was the, the crime scene not necessarily processed that way? Do, do we have an idea? Well, I believe it was processed the way it should have been, but according to the one surviving witness, uh, the men had on masks and they were also wearing gloves as well. So you have that aspect. But at the same time, there's a shell casing, and most criminals don't take the time to put on gloves when they're loading a gun full of bullets. So there's likely some DNA found there at the scene, but you know uh, as well as I do, Vinny, DNA on its own won't solve a crime. You need more than that. And ultimately, how is his, his family uh, holding up? Do they have any hope? Um, and, and how difficult is it for them to, to not have an answer here? Well, they are not holding up. I mean, here we are 13 years later, and Sandra Wilson still cries almost every day. She goes to his gravesite almost every week to see Petey. His daughter, who is now 18, just graduated high school. She was five when her dad was killed. So she didn't even have the opportunity to see her dad at graduation. It was one thing that the graduation was virtual because of the pandemic, but it's another thing definitely not to have your father there. It is, it is difficult. All, all these cases are tough. And, and you know, it, it, it's hard to understand unless you're in those shoes, right? Even, even covering them and speaking with them that you lose your loved one, you lose your child, you lose your dad, and that's forever. It never gets fixed. And then at the end of the day, the person responsible is walking around free, Vincent. Walking around free, like, like it never happened. Yeah. yeah, walking around free, living their life, and you know, laughing at what they did to Petey. Uh, but it's no laughing matter for that family. Vincent Hill, KJRH. Um, Oklahoma's cold case files, it streams. Uh, you can uh, please check it out, folks. A lot more stories that he's digging up. And digging up the only, only the way only a true investigator can dig up these cases. <laughs> Vincent, great to see you. <laughs>